You will have heard me talk previously about using a logical or a sensible range of parameter values when performing an optimization, and this is a really important aspect of any best practice approach. So I'll be looking into this in a lot more detail in today's episode, and I'll also show you the potentially disastrous consequences that can occur if you don't do this. But there is one scenario, and only one to the best of my knowledge, where it can actually be very advantageous to break this rule, and so I'll also be explaining just how you can turn this to your own advantage. So, as I said in the introduction, I'll be looking further into a concept that I've spoken about quite a lot in past episodes, and that is only using a logical or a sensible range of parameter values in any optimization that you perform. But I've never gone into a lot of detail previously regarding what happens if you don't take this advice, and so that will form the main part of today's episode. However, there is one justifiable reason when it actually makes sense to break this rule. And by doing this myself, I've had at least two occasions where I've been able to create a brand new trading system by doing just that. But we'll come to this second point later in the episode. For now, let's stay with the main theme. Okay, so the first thing I need to cover is how I actually define what I mean by a sensible range. And to do that, let's look at a couple of examples. I'll look at one example that uses a fairly purist price action model, and then one that uses an indicator. So let's look at the price action model first. Here, let's say we're trading a trend-based system. And here we have a simplistic model of the price action. Now, we'll assume by this point we've already determined that there is an underlying trend that we want to trade. And you might have done that through rules on the price action or indeed by the use of indicators. But regardless of the mechanism we've used to do that, we're now going to use pure price action to determine when the price is in a pullback from that trend. And let's just say that it's the percentage pullback that we're optimizing as part of our system. So in the example you can see on the screen here, when the price reaches a specified pullback, it would enter a long trade. Obviously, if the price action was reversed, then we could equally enter a short trade. Now, as you'll be aware, prices often reverse around what are known as Fibonacci levels. And so for this particular trading premise, we could say that a logical range of parameters for the pullback would be between 38 and 62%. Or if you wanted to extend that a little, then you could go from the more minor Fib levels of 23 and 78%. But either way, they would seem like logical and sensible choices for the parameter values that we're going to optimize. And the important point is that the reason they're logical and sensible is because they are aligned to the premise of the trading system that we're testing. Now let's look at the converse of this in terms of illogical parameter selection. Let's say that instead of bounding our range by the lower and higher FIB levels, we now just take the approach where we optimize between 0 and 200%. That would be completely illogical for the type of system we're trying to optimize here. And why is it illogical? Because it goes against the system premise, which of course is a trend-based premise. Now there's a point I want to make here, which is there is nothing wrong with a trading system that is based on 100% retracement. Indeed, if you're trading a system that relies on support and resistance, where reversals often occur where price change direction in the past, and also if you're testing a mean reversion type system, where again 100% retracement is often a good turning point. And equally, 
there's nothing wrong with a 150% retracement. Indeed, if you're trading a breakout system, then this signifies that the price has broken below a previous low. So I'm not saying you shouldn't use these values. What I'm saying is that if you're testing a system premise based on a trend following system, then those values are illogical. But you might be saying to yourself now, but why shouldn't I try those values? Because if they produce a profitable system, then that's what you're trying to achieve, isn't it? What is the worst that could happen? Well, the problem is that your whole optimization process becomes confused. If some of the parameter values you're testing are opening trades based on other types of systems like mean reversion or breakout systems, then clearly your close signal has to change as well. So if your close signal is still based on a trend system, your whole rationale is becoming confused. What kind of system is it that you're optimizing? So my advice to you is that you always keep your intended system premise at the forefront of your thinking whenever you're trying to decide what the range of values is that you'll be testing. Okay, so let's move on to the second example, which is more simplistic and uses an indicator. So here we'll look at an oscillator, and this happens to be the DeMarker oscillator, but the same concept applies for any. So in this scenario, let's say that we're concentrating on a mean reversion system premise. So we'll be buying long when the indicator is oversold and selling short when the indicator is overbought. So the green band on the oscillator is where you would enter a long trade and the red band represents where you would close that long trade. And potentially, if you were trading both ways, you could also open your short trade within that red band too. So that all seems very sensible and logical. But let's say now you extend the range of values that you're optimizing so that they start to overlap, as you can see here. Now, just like the first example where the system starts to get very confused in terms of the premise it's trying to exploit. And so in this scenario, if the parameters for the entry and exit did start to overlap, then clearly that would cause all sorts of issues. Now, a telltale sign or a warning light, if you like, that this has taken place is when you achieve a optimization surface like the one you see here. So the part of the surface that you see on the left here might be from the values of the system we were trying to exploit, the trend-based system that we looked at previously in example one. Whereas the alternative parts of the surface that also perform quite well might be from alternative types of systems, let's say a mean reversion system. And so now you can see that by extending the parameter range beyond what was sensible means that although you set out to exploit a trend-based system, if one of these areas on the right of the surface is better than your intended region, then you actually end up trading a completely different type of system. So what I think is a more desirable profile that actually helps to illustrate the fact that you have optimized over a sensible range is what you can see here. There's clearly one consolidated area that focuses in on what the best parameters are for that particular system premise. Now in the last episode, I spoke about a technique called walk forward analysis or walk forward optimization. Now the practice of choosing a sensible range here when using this technique is even more important. Extend your parameter values here beyond what is sensible and you will genuinely end up in all sorts of problems. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail now about why that is. And so click top right now to go to the next part.